Hi, and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. That's Western Port Bay in Melbourne, Victoria. Over there is French Island and behind it is the Port of Hastings. Perfect for discussing our topic, international trade. So far, we've been looking at trade between what we can call domestic sellers and domestic buyers. In other words, people buying and selling in the same country. Now we're going to introduce a third group, overseas buyers or overseas sellers. To do this, we're going to use what's called the small country assumption. We're going to assume that the home country, i.e. the country we've been looking at so far, is a price taker on the world market. In other words, the country is simply going to take the price of goods that it can buy from overseas as given, and it's going to take the price that it can sell goods overseas as given. To take a practical example, we're going to focus on liquefied petroleum gas, or LPG. We've got the quantity on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. And we're going to assume initially that there is no international trade in LPG. We're going to start in a situation of autarky where there's no international trade. And in that situation, the domestic equilibrium is simply going to occur where the domestic demand curve intersects the domestic supply curve, and that's going to be at a quantity of Q0 and a price of P0. Now what happens if we open up to international trade? Let's start by looking at the situation where the world price of LPG is above the domestic price of LPG. That's exactly the situation facing Australia in 2014 as it starts to open up for domestic exports of LPG. Notice that the world price is above the domestic price, so there will be an incentive for domestic producers to sell at the higher world price rather than sell at the lower domestic price. But what does that do? My claim is the following. If the world price is above the domestic price, as we've got here, then that's going to lead to a higher domestic price. The domestic price will go up to the world price. Given the domestic demand curve, that's going to mean that domestic consumers will buy less LPG, but given the domestic supply curve, the higher price will mean that domestic suppliers will want to sell more LPG. The difference between the amount sellers want to sell, QS, and the amount buyers want to buy, QD, is going to be the amount that we sell overseas. So this gap here, this difference, is going to be the amount of LPG that Australia exports. Let's work through that and see why this is the case. Let's start from the perspective of domestic producers of LPG. What demand curve do they face? Well, notice that if the price is up here above PW, then we still have some domestic demand. That's given by the domestic demand curve. But of course, no one overseas is going to pay a higher price than PW for Australia's gas because they can buy as much as they want overseas at the world price of PW. But notice that as we drop the price down to PW, once we hit PW, our domestic sellers can sell as much gas as they like to the rest of the world at that world price of PW. That's our small country assumption. Our domestic suppliers are price takers at the world price. So the demand curve, as seen by domestic suppliers of LPG, is the solid blue line here. The equilibrium where the total demand curve, domestic plus world demand, intersects domestic supply, is now given here at QS and PW. From the seller's perspective, they'll be selling the gas for PW because they can sell as much as they want to the rest of the world at PW. But what about domestic consumers of gas? Well, from their perspective, the supply curve has changed. From their perspective, if they want to pay a price below PW, they won't get any gas. Why not? Well, no one's going to sell it to them. Overseas producers aren't going to sell at a cheaper price in Australia than the world price. Domestic 
producers aren't going to sell at a price less than PW, they can export it for PW. So from the perspective of domestic consumers, the supply curve for gas is now simply the world price until that hits the domestic supply curve, and then it follows up the domestic supply curve. They the equilibrium is going to be where this new total supply curve for domestic consumers intersects the domestic demand curve, and that's at the price of PW and the quantity QD. So, our claim that the domestic consumers and the domestic producers face a higher world price looks like it's correct. Domestic consumers will buy QD, domestic producers will be able to sell on the world market for QS, and that gap, the difference between the two, is going to be the amount that Australia exports, our LPG exports, to the rest of the world. Now, most students see that the domestic sellers will receive the price PW. That sort of seems obvious. They're going to be able to sell to the rest of the world at price PW at the world price, so of course they're going to receive the world price and they're going to want to sell QS. But sometimes students get confused about why domestic consumers also have to pay PW. Why do domestic consumers have to pay the higher price? Well, to see that, imagine that domestic consumers didn't pay the higher price. Let's imagine that the price only rose a little bit above P0 for domestic consumers. They would like to buy the quantity given by their demand curve, but who's going to sell it to them? Again, not the domestic producers, because the domestic producers can sell as much as they want at PW. So there's going to be an excess demand if the price is only at a lower price than PW. Domestic sales are going to be zero, but domestic demand is clearly greater than zero. Well, what happens if we have an excess demand? We know that that's going to lead to poor pressure to push the price up. Where is that domestic excess demand going to stop pushing the price up when the price gets to PW. Because at the price of PW, suddenly domestic consumers can compete with world consumers and the domestic suppliers are quite happy to supply them QD at the world price or to export that at the world price. So the excess demand has gone away because now all producers receive the same price, whether they sell domestically or overseas. Understanding this simple logic that opening up Australia for exports of liquefied petroleum gas will increase the price from the current low domestic price up to the world price, which is at the moment significantly higher, explains why domestic users of LPG, particularly big manufacturing plants, are trying to oppose the exports. They want the government to prevent domestic suppliers from selling too much gas overseas. What they really want, mean by that is they want to have some gas reserved so that they can keep the price, maybe not at P0, but certainly they don't want the price to go up to PW. They'd be quite happy with the price staying pretty low because that will make them, the domestic consumers, better off. In the absence of government interference, opening up to world trade will mean that the domestic producers receive PW and the domestic consumers pay PW. Thanks for listening. We'll continue on with international trade next time.